is your first time making a flag um, or even your first time working much with fondant, the best thing to do is to go to the local craft store and get the cheap fondant that they have there because that's the most forgiving fondant there is. Um, I use other brands when I'm working on wedding cakes or, you know, really big, big deal cakes that have to taste absolutely great. But when you're just working on um, and learning how to do it, it's so much easier to start with a brand that's really forgiving. So, I have cornstarch in here. Um, it's not a fancy tool. All it is is um, I've taken a new, brand new stocking. I've put cornstarch in it and then tied a knot, and it makes a perfect pelt. So I have my flag rolled out, and if you're going to use uh, one inch tape, then you need about 13 inches wide, and you can really make it as long as you want that you feel looks like a good flag. Um, you take the tape, and you just stick it down, one, you go about another inch, two, and you don't have to measure these off because if your flag is flowing, if it's going to be laying on the, the cake and um, kind of like draped, nobody will ever see if it's not quite even. You know, if it's like this, it won't work. But if it's a little bit off, it's not a big deal. You could, of course, measure out one inch by one inch on each side, but They will always count the stripes. Anybody that sees the cake, for some reason, they always count the stripes. They never count the stars, but they always count the stripes. So, we have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen. Perfect. And then we cut this. To make it even. using just a red airbrush color. This one happens to be Chef Master. Um, I like Americolor. Um, I really don't usually go with Wilton um, because I think their red is a little bit off on this. So what you do is you use a smooth, slow motion. You're not putting the whole color on all at once. Now if your tape is kind of bubbling up, then you do this and you kind of hold it down. That will keep it from going under as bad. Everybody tends to have a little bit of, of seep under. It's not a big deal. And I'll teach you actually how to hide that when you put it on the cake. Now you want to do the color build up really slow. If you do it all at once and it gets wet and sticky, and red actually dries a little bit darker. So if you make it too dark, then your red can almost come out of brown. Smooth, even. And you notice I'm holding my airbrush the same distance from it the whole time. Now. You start slow, and you put your fingers here. And you have to kind of pull it. Now sometimes your tape will stick. But if you kind of do it slow and easy, it will all turn out. And sometimes you have to cut the end off where it sticks too. So. Smooth. 
the tape kind of just um, smushes it down sometimes, so I just go on the ends. And it really doesn't matter the side, the blue side, we're going to connect the blue because it can, it's going to be folded under anyway. And then, this is a quilting wheel. And what I do is I make stitches with it really gently. And I find that this is one of the part that amazes the people because they'll be looking at the flag and then they'll realize that there's little stitching and they just get so tickled when they see it. Okay, now I'm going to put the flag on the cake and I hold it like this. I drop the corner down that I want down. And you really just kind of let it fall on the cake. And I try to make the, the drapes to not be just straight across. I think it looks so much better. And you have to kind of do this quick. Once it settles, you really cannot pick it up. I cannot pick this part up and move it again. It will just rip it. As you can see, I actually left the imprint from my other flag on the table because I'm going to use it as my pattern. For the width. The width is very important because you want it to match up your stripes. It goes to here and it doesn't have to be exactly perfect as long as the ends match and it'll be folded so nobody will be able to tell. I don't do the, um, the blue a particular size. Why we don't use some people think that you should make the blue this little square in the flag, but um, this is actually an illusion. If you make the blue little and it's a folded flag on the cake, what do people see? They see a little flag. If you make the blue big, then their eyes see the flag, even though it's not huge, it because it's folded, their eyes actually see a big flag. Um, I prefer actually on, on the blue and Americolor blue, but right now I have a Chromacolor blue. Um, and the only reason this is purple is because I used the red stri the part that was red striped from the first flag I did. Now you want to make even, stro even strokes. Honestly, when you do it, you should do it just one way. Because the airbrush is kind of like a lawnmower. You know when you do the lawnmower and you do one stripe this way. And then you do a stripe this way. You know how on your yard you have those stripes? Well fond it's the same. It actually does have a texture and it's picking up the texture going both ways and you'll have stripes. But if you do it one direction, you're less likely to have stripes. Thing to do is actually um, there is a blue luster dust that's like a sapphire blue and after I paint it blue I just hit it with a, just a little bit of luster dust and it's mixed in Everclear and it turns the most beautiful just barely shiny blue. We have our quilter's wheel again and I always do this if you do it slow, it's much easier. Sometimes I do it fast and I run off the edges. But if you do it slow, it's much easier. For some reason, they wobble. And nobody will actually see one end, so you don't have to do it on all the ends. But I just do it in case I get to the cake and I, and I realize I want to put the other end up. And there we go. We're ready to put it on the cake. You have to be careful with the blue because it is wet. Just to pick it up off, this, off the red, it would leave a spot. It now looks like a big flag. 